Hey, good morning, everyone. Marty Bazzori here, January 14th, 2022. We gave you quite a bit of content on the blog to digest this week. So having just scored our macro index for the week, I thought I'd just do a quick down and dirty video for you. Run through the charts of consequence uh, among our 48 data points. And um, again, emphasis on keeping it brief this morning. So in front of you is the simple graph of our index. We actually had quite the decline this week. We dropped about 12 points to 31.25. And if you look at the size of these moves, that's a pretty substantial uh, one week move. And I'm gonna run through the whys of that move currently. So while we were kind of melting a little higher in terms of macro conditions, I, I did mention last week on our written macro update that while things were improving, there was a number of things that uh, did have our attention that were suggesting perhaps maybe that improvement wasn't uh, wasn't going to last in the near term. Now, granted, a 31.25 score is quite a ways from zero. And when we drop below zero, as we did initially back here in oh, August of 2019. That denotes, um, in our view, recession odds going forward higher than continued expansion odds. And that, as you know, that is how that played out. Of course, COVID got in the way right here as well. So we don't have that kind of risk here, but we do have a slowing of growth and it shows up in a number of places. Starting with this morning's retail sales number was quite disappointing. Um, on a month over month basis, down 1.90%, the headline reading 16.9% um, year over year, pretty positive base effects still there. Now, you know, you could talk about Omicron. Problem with that is that we had a significant fall in online retail sales as well. So you'd think if it was all about coronavirus, then you know, you'd see an uptick in online sales if indeed consumers were feeling it out there, so to speak. Could be that people got into the game early this year and did a lot of their um, you know, did a lot of their purchases earlier in the year to get ready for Christmas and so forth. But when we look at the consumer sentiment readings and we just had the University of Michigan's out today, consumers are certainly not feeling it again, so to speak. Uh, the big bugaboo is inflation. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, we could get into the weeds. Things like, is it a good time to buy a house? That actually got a little better, but it's still at a multi-year low. Terrible time to buy a car. Very concerned about inflation. Inflation is rising faster than wages, so people on a real inflation-adjusted basis are actually seeing a decline in incomes. So despite you know people sitting on two trillion in savings, which a lot of economists believe is going to be very bullish this year, uh, we've made the point that well that's fine, but consumers really do need to be feeling like spending that money, and clearly they didn't in December, according to the retail sales numbers and according to the latest. Uh, sentiment indexes. Lang Langer does theirs on a weekly basis, and you can see that one is declining quite precipitously. We don't have the conference boards for December out yet. Heavy truck sales, this isn't much talked about, you know, in the popular financial or economic media, but it's an important one. At least, it sure looks like it on the chart, right? Here is the this indicator rolling over, you know, oh, a year plus before the Great Recession. And again, remember, you know, the powers that be were telling us it was all about COVID in 2020. Well, we were beginning to hedge portfolios before we could spell coronavirus because we saw weak, weakening macro conditions. Uh, we've come out of it, but this is, you know, this is not a good sign. So again, something to, uh, something to definitely keep our eye on going forward. Also related to transportation is the CAS freight index, and we both have both shipments here and expenditures. Now, shipments were actually flat month over month. Um, expenditures are continuing to rise, and we're going to score that as a negative. Typically, you'd see, you know, you'd say, you know, if you have pricing power, uh, you know, which they do, you know, that's a plus, and this would be positive for the economy. Well, you know, it speaks to a lot of things, not the least of which being supply bottlenecks and so forth. So this is going to um, drag a point on our overall index when we look at flat shipments against continuing, you know, very rapidly rising transportation costs. And, you know, the definition of stagflation is where you have 
uh, you know, uh, flat or weakening economic conditions against higher inflation. So something to keep our eye on, and we're seeing a signal here and there that that is a risk. But again, we're not we're not in the stagflation camp yet at this point. Drilling down on transportation, quite the rollover in rail traffic. A lot of this is, is bulk industrial goods, right? Um, various types of commodities and so on. And um, just reading from the report in the carload community groups, an increase compared with the same week in 2021, there was one out of the 10, and that was non-metallic minerals. Um, but commodity groups posted decreases compared with the same week in 2021. Grain down 5,000 carloads um, to 22,000. Coal was down. Uh, metallic ores and metals was down and so forth. So that's an interesting take on demand for, you know, important commodities as well. And, and mentioned coal, you know, relative to energy, um, grain relative to foods and so forth. And, and of course, as clients, as you know, we're quite bullish on both uh, ag commodities going forward and energy. In fact, as we speak right now, the S&P is down a chunk. Last time I looked, the Dow was down 400 points, but our ag commodities ETF is up just under 1%. And there's a lot that goes into that. But, you know, we want to pay attention to everything, including real traffic, and then add that, you know, into our thought process as we consider our theses on virtually everything we do going forward. CPI and PPI prints came out this last week, still waiting on the uh, PCE, which is personal consumption expenditures, which is what the, uh, the Fed supposedly uh, uses as their metric. But for December, CPI, uh, headline CPI was up 7.0% year over year, 0.5% uh, month over month, very, very high, of course, historically and very concerning. And this has even the dovish Fed members now needing to sound very hawkish when it comes to inflation. The producer price index for final demand up, call it 10% year over year, exceedingly high historically, 0.2% on a month over month basis. Folks, due to base effects as much as anything else, um, and, and again, you just noticed you know, rail traffic activity coming down a bit, shipments flat overall across the, the freight space. Um, I don't have the Baltic Dry Index um, chart for this presentation pulled up, but that's continuing to drop quite precipitously. So, you know, we, we definitely are going to see, I think, and I think I can say definitely, an easing of the rate of change on inflation going forward. And I think that that's going to bring out, you know, the... Um, the people who've been pounding the table that we can't create inflation in this country, uh, they're going to be you know, screaming, I told you so. That's utterly nonsense in our view at this point, based on everything we see. And I hate to be so, um, you know, so arrogant or so condescending. It's just what the data is telling us. And there's some, some big underlying structural factors that say you know, inflation at a greater pace than we've experienced for most of us, for most of our lifetime, certainly the last several decades, is probably going to stick going forward. And if you want to just think of one you know, real important data point, just look at wages and um, the extent to which they're rising and having to rise even to just attract people these days, right? Well, wages are the stickiest form of inflation or form of you know, higher cost to companies. People, companies tend not to reduce wages once people, you know, fight hard and long to get increases. So, um, but there's lots of other factors. We talked about populism and, and kind of deglobalization and lots of other things to get deep in the weeds. Now, we're going to be open-minded. And of course, I'll be the first one to say we were dead wrong if we're sitting here two years from now or three years from now, we haven't seen the kind of inflation that we expect. But while we see the things signaling us the way they are, we're going to definitely continue to express that in a smart, safe fashion within our asset allocations. And then I'm going to, I'm going to close with two things on a positive note. This, you know, this again, this is commodities. This is a Bloomberg Commodity Index, so this is inflation. Um, but, you know, it's firming, right? And so we just talked about the transportation uh, numbers on some commodities going down. Overall, the commodity complex seems to be pretty firm. At the moment, we're going to say that's definitely inflationary, but it also speaks to healthy demand amid, you know, challenging um, capacity backdrop, so to speak. 
But uh, again, right now we're going to score that in that positive. You know, it goes through the roof and the economy begins to turn down. Suddenly that's going to be a real negative uh, from an overall um, macro perspective because that would be you know, stagflation by definition. And then lastly, I'm going to stop here with small business hiring plans. The NFIB survey results for December came out this week. I talked a little bit about it already on the blog. Um, moderate increases in the overall optimism, optimism index and um, CapEx, which didn't move the needle, but big increase in hiring plans. So if companies are, especially small businesses, which really dominate you know, the hiring in the U.S., if they're saying we need workers, right, it does speak to their stated concern about finding people who can qualify for their jobs. But at the end of the day, you know, that's certainly not recessionary, right? If companies are saying we need to hire, and quite frankly, they're saying, and we're willing to pay for them. So, uh, so that's a net positive. So again, folks, we don't have recessionary conditions right here, but we do have a rolling over right now in terms of you know, rate of change, growth rates within the economy. So something to certainly keep an eye on, and it is happening amid continuing higher inflation prints. But again, one more time, I think that'll abate a bit as we get into the year. But uh, make no mistake, this is going to be a tough year, particularly for the folks who think they are living within the same regime that we've been living in the last oh, 11, 12 years. That unequivocally is not the case. And that has real implications to how portfolios are managed. And clearly what's worked the past 12 years ain't going to be what's going to work going forward. So we need to be smart about it, we need to be diversified, need to be defensive in this environment. But we also need to take advantage of opportunities uh, that are there. And we see many of those as well. Thank you as always for watching and listening. Hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.